It's a question that fascinates and concerns many people. After more than four decades in space, some assume that the Voyager probes have already exited our solar system. But the truth is a bit more complicated. One of the biggest challenges Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have encountered isn't distance, it's the solar wind. At the outer edge of our solar system, a turbulent clash takes place between this solar wind and the interstellar medium. Scientists refer to the resulting barrier as a kind of firewall, a scorching region of space where temperatures can soar to 89,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And though it can't be seen with the naked eye, it's very real. So can Voyager 2 truly escape the solar system and continue into interstellar space? And even if it can, does the presence of this intense firewall pose a risk to spacecraft or even future human missions? Let's dive into how Voyager 2 encountered this fiery barrier at the edge of our solar system. Imagine turning on a tap over a sink. The stream of water hits the basin and creates a distinct boundary with the water already there. That's similar to how the sun behaves, except instead of water, it emits solar wind in every direction. And instead of a sink full of water, it's surrounded by a sea of particles known as interstellar plasma. The sun, powered by nuclear fusion, constantly releases streams of high-energy particles. These solar particles are eventually slowed by the sun's gravity, preventing them from traveling endlessly through space. In fact, solar wind can only travel a certain distance, about 120 astronomical units, or 11 billion miles, before it hits an invisible wall of high-energy plasma. This solar bubble acts as a shield protecting our solar system from dangerous cosmic rays. While that's great for life on Earth, it poses a significant challenge for anything attempting to travel beyond it. This protective region was long theorized by scientists, but Voyager 2 gave us the first real evidence of what's out there. What it found was a blazing hot zone made of low-density plasma at temperatures of nearly 89,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost like hitting a wall made of heat and particles, a true physical boundary. The moment a spacecraft passes into interstellar space, it enters this extreme environment, often referred to as the heliopause. The heliopause forms where the sun's solar wind collides with the interstellar winds blowing through the galaxy. It's an enormous bubble of charged particles stretching billions of miles in every direction. This thick region, located roughly 120 times farther from the Sun than Earth, helps deflect or absorb about 70% of the cosmic rays hurtling toward us from distant stars and galaxies. Thanks to Voyager 2, which crossed the heliopause in 2018, we now know that this boundary is hotter and denser than scientists once thought. And although Voyager 2's passage through this fiery zone took less than a day, it confirmed that our solar system is indeed surrounded by a sort of high-temperature barrier. Voyager 2's twin, Voyager 1, entered interstellar space in 2012, but a malfunction prevented it from collecting key data at the boundary. New research reveals that this barrier isn't uniform. Some areas are thinner, with small gaps that allow interstellar radiation to slip through. Voyager 2 even passed two such regions before officially crossing the border, areas where radiation levels temporarily spiked. So what happens beyond the heliopause? As solar particles move farther from the Sun, their influence weakens. Though the solar wind once stretched past Pluto's orbit, its ability to block galactic material eventually fades. Over time, it becomes less effective at repelling cosmic dust and energetic particles drifting through the galaxy. NASA's Parker Solar Probe is helping us understand this process better. The mission is named after Eugene Parker, the scientist who first proposed the idea of solar wind in the 1950s while at the University of Chicago. Back then, his idea was met with skepticism until another prominent astronomer, Subramanian Chandrasekhar, backed it. According to Parker's theory, the sun's outer atmosphere, or corona, can reach temperatures of up to 3.5 million degrees Fahrenheit. When this plasma becomes too hot for gravity to contain, it escapes into space as solar wind, dragging magnetic fields with it. 
Sometimes, the Sun also ejects massive clouds of these particles in events known as coronal mass ejections C -M -E -S. These blasts can create geomagnetic storms that cause stunning auroras, but they can also interfere with power grids, satellites, and communication systems on Earth. The solar wind extends far beyond Pluto, filling what NASA describes as a windsock-shaped region that trails the Sun as it moves through the galaxy. The European Space Agency estimates that the heliosphere, the region dominated by the Sun's solar wind, extends roughly 100 astronomical units from the Sun at its closest point. This heliosphere plays a critical role in shielding us from cosmic rays, high-speed, high-energy particles from deep space that can damage DNA and disrupt electronics. Without this protective barrier, Earth might not be a habitable planet. The Sun's solar wind changes with its 11-year activity cycle. As sunspots appear and disappear, the speed, density, and temperature of the solar wind fluctuate. On average, the wind travels around 190 miles per second, or nearly a million miles per hour. NASA's Mariner Two spacecraft first detected the solar wind during its journey to Venus. It found both a slow stream moving around 215 miles per second and a fast stream traveling at double that speed. Later, Skylab's X-ray images in 1973 revealed that these fast streams came from coronal holes, cooler, less dense regions of the Sun with open magnetic fields. CMEs can also create extremely fast solar winds, sometimes exceeding 600 miles per second. Still, scientists are puzzled by the slower wind. NASA's Ulysses spacecraft, which orbited over the Sun's poles starting in 1990, found that during periods of low solar activity, the wind primarily emerged from near the solar equator. But during solar maximum, the boundary between fast and slow winds becomes blurred. All planets in our solar system are influenced by the Sun's ever-changing outflow. As NASA Heliophysics Director Nikki Fox puts it, when the Sun sneezes, Earth catches a cold. The effects of solar activity can ripple across space sometimes with serious consequences. Could Earth be struck by a major solar storm? It's possible. Solar flares and CMEs can send bursts of energy and plasma toward our planet. These storms can trigger beautiful auroras, but also pose risks to satellites, electrical systems, and communication networks. While some storms pass harmlessly, others can wreak havoc, especially when they interact with Earth's magnetic field. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, created the NOAA Space Weather Scales as a uniform way to measure the intensity of space weather events like geomagnetic storms. Much like how tornadoes and hurricanes are categorized, these scales provide a structured approach to gauge the potential consequences these solar disturbances can have on Earth's technologies. The scale ranges from G1, minor, to G5, extreme. Evaluating everything from aurora visibility at different latitudes to the degree of interference in power grids, satellites, and other modern systems. Now let's rewind time to the 19th century, to the moment when Earth experienced the most intense solar storm ever recorded. On what seemed like an ordinary day, Richard Carrington, a British amateur astronomer, ascended the steps to his small observatory in the countryside. He opened the dome, aimed his brass telescope at the sky, and began sketching a grouping of prominent sunspots. Suddenly, Carrington witnessed something no one had seen before. Two blinding bursts of light flared from the sun's surface. They appeared, swelled in brightness, and vanished within minutes. At the time, Carrington didn't realize that he had just documented the first known white light solar flare, a colossal solar eruption that would later bear his name. This solar flare was essentially a magnetic explosion on the surface of the sun. For a brief moment, its brilliance rivaled that of the sun itself. That same blast sent spectacular auroras, bright waves of red, purple, and green dancing across skies all over the world. But there was more. The event also supercharged telegraph systems. Operators received electric shocks, some telegraph paper caught fire, and astonishingly, 
Messages were transmitted even without batteries. Solar flares aren't rare, but none have matched the magnitude of the Carrington event in 1859. But what if one that size struck today? We've already seen the effects of smaller scale flares. These emit high energy charged particles that strike Earth's magnetic field, disturbing it and triggering what scientists call geomagnetic storms. Take February 2011, for example. A solar flare interfered with GPS signals, causing potential issues for planes and ships reliant on satellite navigation. More recently, on April 21, 2023, Earth was hit by a powerful wave of plasma from a solar outburst, sparking a severe geomagnetic storm just two days later. The storm disrupted satellites and power grids, and it triggered breathtaking auroras in unexpected places. This marked the third major event of the current solar cycle, closely tracked by Niue's DSCOVR spacecraft. If a solar flare the size of the Carrington event hit today, the outcome could be catastrophic. The initial radiation burst, rich in X-rays and ultraviolet light, would interfere with radio communications, GPS, and satellite signals. It would also unleash a solar radiation storm, dangerous enough to threaten astronauts if they weren't properly shielded. Then comes the coronal mass ejection, CME, a fast-moving cloud of charged particles. As this CME collides with Earth's magnetosphere, the results could be widespread blackouts and technological failures. Everyday functions like filling your car with gas could become impossible since even a simple card transaction relies on satellites. A glimpse of such disruption happened in February 2022 when SpaceX lost 40 Starlink satellites due to a geomagnetic storm. The satellites were in low Earth orbit when Earth's atmosphere absorbed the storm's energy and expanded, increasing atmospheric drag. Unable to reach higher altitudes in time, the satellites burned up during re-entry, costing the company tens of millions of dollars. To better predict such threats, scientists closely study the solar wind, streams of charged particles constantly released by the sun. Understanding and forecasting these phenomena is critical, as the economic and technological damage from space weather events could be immense. That's where NASA's heliophysics missions come into play. These missions aim to uncover how planetary atmospheres form, how space weather impacts Earth-based systems, and how solar activity affects our planetary neighbors. Because of its unpredictability and intensity, the solar environment has become a major focus of modern space science. Just as we developed systems to detect and respond to tornadoes and hurricanes, scientists now strive to build early warning systems for solar flares. One day, solar flare alerts could become as common as thunderstorm or hurricane warnings. Fortunately, Earth benefits from a natural defense system, the heliosphere. Powered by the solar wind, this giant bubble of plasma stretches far beyond Pluto and shields our planet from about 70% of interstellar cosmic rays. Without it, Earth would be bathed in harmful radiation that could threaten all known life. Thanks to the Voyager missions, we've gained valuable insight into the structure and strength of the heliosphere. Voyager 1 and 2, launched in the 1970s, have journeyed through the outer layers of this solar shield and into interstellar space. So far, these spacecraft have survived the plasma wall, a region of heated particles at the boundary of the heliosphere. But we still don't fully understand how this intense environment might affect future interstellar explorers, especially human travelers. Regardless, this discovery is monumental. It marks the cosmic shoreline, the transition from our sun's protective bubble to the vast uncharted ocean of space beyond. Thanks for joining us on this journey through time and space. Don't forget to click the next video on your screen for more captivating content from the universe.